How's it going everyone? Triple G here, and today in this episode of I'm Really Bored at Work, uh, I thought it might be a good idea to go over a piece which everybody should have in their SHTF toolkit, and that is the multimeter. This is a very inexpensive multimeter, uh, once again one of my favorite places, Harbor Freight, but it's got pretty much all of the features that you could possibly need in it and something like this 15 years ago would probably cost around a hundred bucks to have all these features in it now you can get it for about five or even less so the only difference between this guy and the Sirius Pro ones that are, have comparable features on it would be uh, they're a whole lot more durable, you can drop them a whole lot more, dump them into the water a whole lot more, and they'll probably also be quite a bit more accurate after a whole lot of abuse than this guy will. But, that notwithstanding, this is perfectly capable of doing what you need it to do. So if you already know what a meter is and what it does, then you can just skip right over this video, because this is just going to be kind of the most rudimentary of things, uh, introductions to one. But if you've always been kind of a little curious about electricity and how to work with it, play with it a little bit more, and how you can tame it a little bit better in an SHTF situation, then stick around and check it out. Okay, so what we're going to go over are the basic functions of this multimeter, called a multimeter because it does multiple things. It measures voltage and current and resistance and a few other little doodads in there. So we will start out with basic voltage measurement, AC voltage, uh, two ranges, 2750, so it could go up to your industrial 480 if need be, but we'll just look at it as a regular AC measuring device, and go across our neutral and hot here in our power strip, and lo and behold, we have a nice 119 point whatever floating around there, exactly what we need. And we will look across neutral to ground, and make sure that that is pretty close to zero. Not too far off, it's a little noisy, but that'll work. And across hot to ground. Exactly what we're looking for. So, use this to either see if you do have power somewhere, or you can also make sure that there isn't power somewhere if you were to go poking around inside of a electrical box somewhere or something like that. Very, very important to, to know that something is not energized if you're going to be playing with it with bare hands or metal tools or anything like that. Okay, another feature that this guy has that most of your professional units would not have uh, is a battery test range so that you can check uh, a 9 volt or a 1.5 volt batteries with it and see what kind of condition they're in. Be a wonderful thing to have when you're out in the field. If you're questioning as to why a piece of equipment is not working, well, first thing you gotta do is check the batteries and make sure they're okay. So, I'm trying to do this with one hand and holding the tripod here, but going across the terminals of a fresh 9 volt battery out of the box, we're looking at about 26 milliamps going on there so that would be an indication of a nice and hot battery and then going across a one and a half volt battery Let's see if we can do this with one hand here and we're reading about 4.3 there so anything over Four is generally looking pretty good for a for a double A anyway, which is mostly what I try and use for everything. Is it keeps stocking down to a minimum. Okay, next range is DC amps or DC current. Uh, you might hear people say amperage when speaking about current. It's one of my pet peeves. Amperage is not a word. It's current. But I digress. Anyway. I uh, probably don't have to worry about using that too much in any of the current ranges. The only thing that I really use it for is for uh, if I've got like a phantom draw on a vehicle or something and I can't figure out where the power is going, I'll stick this in line in there and kind of chase it down a little bit at a time, unplug things until the draw goes away. Uh, this also has a means of measuring the 
uh, quality and effectiveness and uh, functionality of transistors which if you know what that is and how they work then you should have skipped this video over because you are already way more advanced than I'm getting into. Uh, diode check mode which is for measuring uh, semiconductors making sure that they will pass current in one direction and block it in the other direction and then we get into the resistance modes. The only thing I don't like about this meter is that it does not have a an audio continuity check on it. A lot of meters, if you put a dead short across them in continuity check mode, it'll give you a nice beep to let you know that you've got continuity going on. This one does not. Uh, my BK Precision and my Fluke meters both have that, but I don't carry those around with me because of the likelihood that they will get stolen and or destroyed in my daily work, so that's why I bring cheapies with me. And they work just fine 99% of the time. So this is for checking to see if you've got a connection between here and there. Uh, okay, back in action again. Sorry about that. I ran out of memory in my phone. So now anyway, we're looking at the resistance and continuity modes on this guy, and I've got it down here on the 200 ohms range. It goes all the way up to 2,000 kilo ohms, which would be 2 mega ohms. Uh, which is a whole lot of resistance. Uh, resistance is the it's the impedance to electrical flow in something that is a sort of a conductor, but it's also sort of uh, not a conductor. Uh, like a filament and a light bulb would be the best example of a, a resistor that I can give you. So this measures what that resistance is in this range, or if you've got continuity from one place to another. Uh, say, which is usually what I use it for, more often than anything other than measuring resistance. Say you've got a switch that you're not sure if it's working. You put your probes across the terminals of the switch, and when you switch it, it should go from open to closed, showing just a bare amount of resistance on there. Uh, or if uh, you've got a fuse you've got to check, see if it's any good, put them across that. Uh, it'll check regular light bulbs with filaments in them. It won't check uh, LED light bulbs or uh, compact fluorescent light bulbs or any of that. But uh, regular filament light bulbs, you can see if it's any good or not. And just uh, generally see if you've got uh, conductivity from one place to another. So to reprise my video from yesterday on the pencils, I just happen to have a pencil here, and we can look at what the... conductivity across uh, the lead of a pencil is. And we look at it on the 200 ohms range, and it's going to tell me, if I can find the center here, that that's right around uh, 23 ohms lead of that pencil. So I think we can, uh, we can probably have some fun with that at a later time. So anyway, that's what the purpose of the resistance ranges are, checking continuity. One thing you want to never do is to use uh, your resistance ranges on a live circuit, because if you put that on something that had a voltage on it, you would blow up your meter. Then your next range is DC volts, which goes all the way from 200 millivolts all the way up to 1,000 volts DC. Most interest to our kind of concentration here will be the 20 volt range because that would be what you'd put it on for testing uh, car batteries, auto batteries, storage batteries, uh, jump packs, that sort of thing that you'd be keeping around to run your inverters off of or your vehicles and making sure that they are putting out what you're hoping they should be or see what they're at and what kind of state of discharge or charge they're at or if you're charging with a solar bank uh, if you're getting into solar this is all stuff that you're going to have to become very very familiar with as this uh, this puppy's going to be your best friend for a long time as you're playing with your new rig the only range that the, this meter does not have on it that i really wish it did is uh, frequency so that uh, you can check and make sure that your generators are putting out the right frequency, 50 or 60 hertz, depending on which side of the pond you're on. 
because if it's too slow or too fast, then things will operate inefficiently and uh, could blow up, and they won't work as well as they could. So, uh, that's about all I can think of right now. General overview to the multimeter and basic electricity for the prepper. If there's anything at all that you can think of, any specific custom applications, questions that you might have, please shoot me a message and I will try to address them as much as possible. Uh, there are a whole bunch of really great videos out there on meters, electricity, their use, and how to do very specific things with it that I don't have anywhere near enough time to get into right now, and I'm not sure what people are interested in. So please hit me back. Ask me questions. I love helping people out. So hope everybody is good. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Happy, healthy, and everybody, peace.